Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you today, Lord. We open our hearts to receive words and utterance from you. And you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us today. And freely we receive our daily bread. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now then, yesterday we were talking about the story from Luke chapter 12 about the rich the man who, had, who planted a vineyard and did so well. And I was explaining to you what covetousness is yesterday from this story. Because Jesus said we should beware of covetousness. No, no, when Jesus said, beware of covetousness, meaning, hey, be careful to see when it's coming. Be careful to see, to avoid it. So, so covetousness comes to your heart. You avoid it. And I told you, covetousness is the thinking that with what I have now, I am good. That's covetousness. And also the thinking that because I don't have now, I'm doomed. It's covetousness. You need to understand that. So we looked at this story and we're trying to find out what did this man do wrong? Why did God call him a fool? And then, because David said a fool is the one who have said in his heart that there is no God. So how has this man said that there is no God? I told you yesterday, because he didn't go before the Lord when he saw the harvest. Now, when the Bible says in Proverbs, it says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You need to understand something there. God has already set a path for you to follow in life. Listen, this is one truth that everybody that believes in God must come to accept. And what is that? Before you were born, he knew you. <laughs> See, he created you in the first place, praise God. So, so he was the one that determined the season that you will be born. He determined the year that you will come into this earth. And that means everything about you have been planned. Now your own part is to acknowledge him in everything that you are doing. Now what does it mean acknowledge him? Acknowledge him doesn't just mean, you know, somebody, are, oh, wow, how did you get that job? Mm, now God do. Or, mm, it's God do. Who are we? <laughs> that doesn't mean you're acknowledging God. You see, sometimes we make this mistake and we think we're just doing what the Bible says. No. That's, that doesn't mean you're acknowledging God. How do you acknowledge God in all your ways? You ask him his mind concerning it. See, that's why what he says that follows is that he will now direct your path when you acknowledge him. So, so how, how is it going to direct your path when, when someone asks you, oh, how, how did you get that job? Oh, it's God, oh. I say, at least I acknowledge God in everything. No. Now, how do you acknowledge God? Everything, every thought of your mind, every decision you're about to make, you run it by him. Isn't it amazing? Jesus said something. He says, if you love me, keep my words. See, in John chapter 14, Jesus said to Judas, if any man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come and make our abode with him. See, meaning he will come and make his home with you. And that's when he will begin to direct every step that you take. So now when he says he will direct your path, what does he mean? What path is he going to direct you? He is going to direct you in the path that he has already set before you. That's why David prayed and said, Thou will show me the path of life. It was a prayer. 
He was saying, Lord, you know what? You will show me the path of life. What is the path of life? The path of life is simply the path that God has ordained and set before you, before the foundation of the world, before you were born. God has set a path for you already. So when you acknowledge him in all your ways, okay, I want to get into school. What do I do? I, I go before the Lord and say, Lord, it's been coming to my heart about going back to school or it's been coming to my heart about um, what school I should go for. You know, I'm thinking of this school, but Lord, I, I want to know what's your heart, what's in your heart. See, now what are you doing? You are acknowledging God in this area of schooling. Okay, you want to take up a job. You go before the Lord and say, Lord, I... I'm thinking of taking up a job. There's nothing wrong with that. He said, the problem we have many times, just like this rich young ruler, is this problem. We think we know what we need to do so you don't acknowledge God. Acknowledging him also does not just mean that, Lord, I'm going to that office to a job. Just guide my steps. So, yes, it's a prayer you have prayed. But acknowledging him is far more than that. Now, you pray that kind of prayer, Lord, please guide my steps. Why are you asking him to guide your steps? You know, someone may ask him to guide his steps because I don't want to get into an accident. Yeah. So that's why you're saying, God, Lord, guide my steps. Once they get to that place, ah, praise God, I got here safely. Okay, Lord, you can stay by the door. Let me handle this from here. So you've not acknowledged the Lord. Acknowledging the Lord, is, it's, it's, you, you sit down and say, okay, why do I need this job? See? And then you think, I say, okay. Yeah, I need, I'm, I'm suffering. I need, I, need some, I need some money to pay my bills. So you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I, I have a problem. He said, I told you yesterday, I was going to tell you a story. Several years ago, when the Lord commanded me to come to the city of Abuja, and I stayed for a few weeks. Now, I didn't really know people. I stayed for a few. I, 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 I didn't know anybody. When I mean I didn't know people, I really didn't know anybody. Now, of course, I knew several people from school and things like that. But when I mean I didn't know anybody, I didn't know anybody that I could run to for anything. So I was, I was in the city. And after a few weeks, this really got tough for me. Because God said, don't start a church. So I go and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then he just said, look, part time, I will give you instruction on what you should do. And then you will obey me. Okay, he had given me some instructions then, but, but things were not working. I was hungry, <laughs> praise God. And then one day, God to me, and I just stood up. I gathered some money that I had. And I said to myself, I'm going back home. I didn't even pray. I didn't even pray about it. That I just told myself, you are going back home. And I packed my stuff and I left the city. I went back home. Now I got back home because I just left school at that time. So I got back home and then my parents asked me, oh, what's, what's going on? I said, I'm back home. I said, I thought you said God said it should be in Abuja. I said, yes, but, well, I'm home for now. Now I arrived in the evening, slept one night. The following day, the word of the Lord came to me. And then the Lord asked me, what are you doing here? I said, Lord, you know what I'm doing here? Because you knew the frustration I was going through. And, and, and I, was, I was waiting for you to help me out. You didn't do anything about it. So I came back home. And then all I heard the Lord say is, go back. Go back to Abuja. Okay, sir. I told my parents, I'm going back to Abuja. Ah, I just came yesterday. I said, yes, the Lord said I should go back. Okay, well, you have to obey the Lord. I said, yeah. So I left. I didn't question the Lord. I left. Now, I remember traveling on that road journey. And then I was getting to the outskirts of the, the city of Abuja. Abeko was coming in. 
And then I received a call. And someone says, are you in town? I said, I'm on my way to town. She goes, I, I need to see you. I said, okay, what's going on? He said, yeah, because the Lord asked me to send you my tithe. I said, really? Said, yes. Okay. I'll be around tomorrow morning because this was already getting late now. I'll be around tomorrow morning, so we'll see. And then I dropped that call and I said, hey, Lord, now you're talking. When I got back to the house, I had to settle some things with God. And then I said, Lord, so what do we do now? I don't want the same frustration. You told me to come back. I don't want the same frustration that I faced before. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, when I told you to stay in the city and give you all the things I told you to do, you did not ask me how would I leave. I said, I thought that was just going to be automatic. He said, no, learn to ask for it. It's when you ask, you will learn. I said, yeah, that's true. So I asked the Lord, okay, so how will I leave? And then the Lord began to teach me things about finances that have built my life till this day. Praise God. It, it, I mean, I saw that truly, you don't need to ask anybody for anything. If you just follow the Lord. Now, now the root of this is, I did not acknowledge him. Even before I left, when I saw that frustration, before leaving, I should have gone before the Lord and said, Lord, things are really getting out of hand. I, I need your help. Now, he would have taught me what he was teaching. He now later taught me. But because I just felt, oh, I'm frustrated, I'm going. And then I left. And then he sent me back. So I just spent that money for nothing on transport. I, are you getting what I'm saying? So when, when I got back, I realized that, look, you can't just continue. He, he, the Lord commanded you to come back. Yes. But then we need to sort out some things. And then the Lord began to teach me. And he's been teaching me ever since, <laughs> praise God. And I see the result of what he's teaching. But I learned something from that day. Every step you want to take. Because one of the things the Lord told me then, oh, and maybe I'll share that another time. <laughs> but I learned every step you want to take. You take it with him. And let him lead you. I learned that. And it has helped me. Now listen, sometimes you may think God is slow. But listen, it is better to wait for him who holds time in his hands than to think you want to run ahead of him and let him meet you. The one you're thinking is slow is the one that has time. He can shut the world and the world will be on one spot. He can do that. You <laughs> see? So, now he's the same one you're saying, God, time is going, time is going. <laughs> Think about it. So, you see, this man in Luke chapter 12 did not acknowledge the Lord. All he needed to have done was, Lord, my harvest is big this year. What's on your mind concerning? Now, from what the Lord told me, it became my practice. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes someone just, we just received some amount of money and like, okay, you know, money is good. But the first thought is, Lord, what's on your mind concerning this? Why did you break this now? You see, that's also why God actually instructed, God taught Abraham. It was God that taught Abraham about tithing. And so when I see people arguing about tithing, they don't even understand what tithing is. Because all they see is collecting money or money being collected from them. That's all they think about tithing. Tithing is beyond money. It kills covetousness from your heart. When you tithe, 
it kills covetousness from your heart. And I'm going to start explaining that tomorrow from this story. Praise God. Our time is up. Listen, the, the wisdom of God is opening up to you. And you are going to experience God's great blessings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.